Taking just a few seconds to make sure your microphone and pop filter are set up correctly before your session can instantly improve your sound. What up y'all, this your boy Wavy Wayne, and I'm gonna give y'all a real quick tutorial today all about setting up your microphone and pop filter. So um, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and do this, man. Whether you a home studio owner or project studio, or if you work in a commercial studio, maybe you're an intern or anything, you wanna go in knowing how to set up a microphone and a pop filter so that you can get the best results. When your client walks in the studio, it's good to have uh, your microphone already set up. You want to kind of get it to about their height and you also want to have that pop filter set up so that they can walk right in, put the headphones on, and hopefully you're using one of my templates too so that as soon as they sing through that microphone, they got effects and all of that and it pretty much sounds like a fully mixed record the very first time they open their mouth. That's the experience that you want to create and that's Wavy Wayne is gonna help you get there, all right? First thing, we definitely do want to make sure that the mic is about at mouth level for our client. When they walk in, here's what I typically do. I'll kind of size them up, you know, depending on where I'm at, I can kind of gauge where they at, and then I'll come up with a level based on that. And so, you know, as they're getting ready, I'll just go ahead in the studio and make sure that I adjust the microphone. Now, not only do you want to make sure that that mic is at mouth level, but you also want to make sure that it's a little bit away from the mic stand. This way your, your, your uh, client doesn't have to get too close up and risk bumping, bumping or knocking or stepping on the feet of the mic stand at all, okay? So what I'm going to do using this boom stand, I'm going to go ahead and tilt this boom out a little bit and extend it to where we are able to just step away from the mic stand just a little bit, all right? So using the next little uh, knuckle here uh -huh, on my uh, actual pop, on my, on my shock mount, I can tilt my microphone up to where it's straight. And now if you see, it's a little bit higher than my mic, than my mouth level, which typically isn't terrible because I want to have my artists uh, kind of hold their head up so that they are extending their uh, throat to open up those vocal cords and all that. Um, but this is just a little bit too high, so I'm gonna use my main little control here to bring it down just a little bit. Cool. So now that we got the mic set about mic height, about mouth height, we are ready to go ahead and set up our pop filter. So the whole point of the pop filter is to stop the plosives like from P's and B's and all those words that kind of send a whole bunch of rush of air to the microphone capsule. That air, when it hits the mic capsule, will basically turn into low frequency rumble and noise down there that we just don't want. It can really muddy up and dirty up your mix. So having a good pop filter and having it placed correctly will basically prevent that stuff from happening and, and allow you to have a, a better sounding mix a whole lot easier without having to do a bunch of mixing and stuff um, to, to fix problems. Fixing, not mixing, all right? This is what I mean. <laughs> so uh, depending on how your studio is set up, um, you kind of want to also make sure that the pop filter allows you to maintain a, a line of sight to whoever the engineer is. So um, for example, if, the, if I, some of the pop filters I've worked with in the past are pretty big and so the arm um, can be in the way. So depending on how you need to position just position this, uh, um, just make sure that it's not going to block the sight line for the artist, whether they're reading off of a, a lyric sheet or something that's on a, a music stand in front of them, or if they just need to see and hear cues from a producer or engineer that's in the studio that they may be working with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my pop filter on to my mic stand. Um, and I'm just kind of gauging it to see where I wanna be at to make sure that I have enough uh, room to play with. So we're just gonna go ahead and screw this on tight. Now the pop filter that I'm using right now, this is a Sterling S2 pop filter. It, it works great. It actually has a double filtering. So, you know, this little nylon section that it has is it's actually a two panel uh, pop filter. So it's on both sides. That works great. I've used ones with metal, uh, uh, um, kind of filters before those work great too. Um, I don't think that you need to spend the absolute most money on a pop filter, but I definitely wouldn't go for the absolute cheapest pop filter either. If y'all want to see me do a whole review 
over a bunch of different pop filters from maybe the most expensive ones to the cheapest ones let me know leave a comment and then i'll jump on that all right when you're setting up your pop filter a good rule of thumb is to make sure that you keep that pop filter about a fist distance away from the microphone okay um so in most cases that's going to be about four to six inches away from that microphone and uh this is the, the reason to do this is because if that mic if the pop filter is right up on the mic there's no space for the plosives to dissipate so you're basically defeating the whole purpose of using a pop filter if you have it too close to your microphone so well, i just like to make sure that i pop it out a little bit place a fist right in between my microphone and my pop filter and i get it set there now of course if you ever work with a client, you know that the first thing they're gonna do when they walk in the studio is come in and start rearranging stuff. So this is what I always do. When I walk into a, a, a booth with my client, I'll walk in with them for the first time. So whenever they first walk in the booth, I make sure I'm either right in front of them to open the door, or I'm right behind them. Um, and then when we go to the microphone, I always say, hey, could you step up and just let me make sure that I got the height right, right? So they'll step up and as they're evaluating, I will go ahead and adjust the pop filter for them. Even if it doesn't need to be adjusted, I'll move it so that they can see that I'm physically doing something, man. Half of being a mixing engineer, recording engineer is all psychological, all right? So now that I got my pop filter set up, I can instruct my artists if I want to, to make sure that they're standing about six inches away from the pop filter as well, which is gonna be good to give me about a foot distance away from my microphone, which most microphone manufacturers recommend to get the best sound. Cool, I think I'm ready to record, Wayne. Getting the recording right is way more crucial than trying to fix it in the mix, all right? If you wanna learn more tips like this about how you can get your setup correctly so you don't have to worry about fixing it in the mix, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bells because I'll be dropping new helpful hits all the time, all right? This is Wavy Wayne. Check out wavywayne.com if you need to cop a custom recording or mixing template to make your sessions flow a whole lot easier, all right? Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to be dope.